Hello, beautiful souls. This is Jamie Goldstein, intuitive astrologer, and I want to offer an intuitive flow for this Aries full moon that we have on October 9th and the current astrology. And so this is a really powerful Aries full moon because the moon is with Chiron, the wounded healer, bringing these opportunities for deep, deep healing of our relationship with self. So we can come into healthier, more sovereign, co-creative relationships with others as the sun, our creative energy is in Libra. And this is really going to lead into the energy of the Scorpio solar eclipse that we have later this month, which one of the big themes is going to be, you know, how are we working with our creative energy and how are we sharing our creative energy with our most intimate people in our lives. Scorpio is very much about how are we co-creating with others? You know, it is a sign of Tantra. And so this lunation, this Aries full moon really opens up the eclipse portal because this is a lunation before our first eclipse of eclipse season. So these eclipse themes are going to be starting, starting now. And my mind is going in so many directions right now. I wanted to bring through so many things at the same exact time. So I'm just having a moment here trying to organize my thoughts, but something really important that I want to share is we are in this time of really accelerated, powerful, transformative evolutionary growth, because every full moon we've had since July has been with the outer planets and the outer planets are really working on these deeper evolutionary themes. Now, one of them was with Saturn. Saturn is a social planet, but I feel like this is still really relevant here. So in July, we had the Capricorn full moon and the moon was with Pluto, right? The great transformer, the great alchemizer, really supporting us to transform and heal something deep within our unconscious. And then in uh, August, we had the Aquarius full moon and the moon was with Saturn, bringing up themes about how are we relating to our inner authority, bringing up themes of integrity and what are we building, right? What structures are we giving our attention to in our lives? And then in September, we had the Pisces full moon. The moon was with Neptune, right? The great unifier. Neptune, the planet that dissolves and is really about the timeless truth. So that full moon with the Pisces full moon was really bringing uh, illumination to where have we been seeing reality through illusion or delusion? Where have we been deceiving ourselves? And was this really powerful opportunity to kind of pull back the veil um, of illusion and start to see reality more clearly, healing some of our old stories and our old narratives of our conditioning. And then this full moon that we're having here in October is with Chiron. So this is so much about deep, deep healing of our relationship with self. Where have we not felt safe um, to be our authentic selves? Where do we have shame or the sense of wrongness around who we truly are? And where have we uh, stuffed down and pushed, denied, disowned who we truly are. So this is an opportunity to really embrace our authenticity of who we are. And then the next full moon that we're going to have, which is going to be the Taurus lunar eclipse, is with our last outer planet here, which is Uranus. So that is going to be really powerful, this really powerful energy of liberation, awakening. It could bring some shocks, some surprises. The energy could be jolting. It could bring like fast moving change. I'll share a lot more about that as, as we get there. But overall, you know, these full moons, which are these times of illumination, uh, revelation, um, fruition, right? Things manifesting, things being revealed. Also, they're really powerful times of release and surrender. They've been really working on these deep, deep evolutionary 
evolutionary themes here. And um, just to like kind of bring in the other planet that I'm not speaking to, which is Jupiter, our other social planet, the Libra new moon that we had earlier, this lunation cycle in September was opposite Jupiter. So there was Jupiter kind of bringing in that energy too here. And then after the Taurus solar or the Taurus lunar eclipse that we'll have, the next one, I believe the full moon, the Gemini full moon, I believe will be with Mars, but now that's the personal planet. So how I'm in Mars will actually be in retrograde then and how I'm really just intuitively tuning into this as we've had these full moons with all the outer planets and then we'll have this full moon with Mars this personal planet of action assertion initiation but Mars is going to be retrograde so that will be a really powerful full moon to be integrating all these deep evolutionary themes, integrating it on this inner level. And then after Mars goes direct here, which will be in January, we can really move forward much more integrated with how we're taking action, what timeline we're aligning with Mars retrograde in Gemini is very much about uh, reorienting what timelines we are um, essentially directing our energy into. There's so much more I want to say about that, but this is like such a powerful time. And I was really feeling into that all the evolution, uh, evolutionary growth we've had, you know, this really accelerated, <laughs> this really accelerated evolutionary growth as we've had all these full moons just activating each of these outer planets here. And so this full moon, I actually just, I think I want to bring up the chart here to kind of focus in my energy. And I'm just really sensing and seeing into the bigger picture here, how, gosh, you know, nothing in astrology is happening in isolation. Everything is interconnected. And this full moon is happening on the Aries Libra axis, right? This is the relationship axis. Aries being relationship with self and Libra being relationship with others. And so anytime we're working on this Aries Libra access, we are working on relationships and relationship with self is directly uh, corresponds to relationship with others. Our relationship with others are a direct reflection of our relationship with self. And this full moon really brings us really powerful healing opportunity because the moon is with Chiron to have this deep, deep healing of relationship with self so we can be in more authentic, um, beautiful, uh, collaborative, co-creative, sovereign relationship with others. And this is coming right before, even before the eclipse, something even, I mean, I think that's really big that I'm excited about. It's one of the biggest astrological transits of the year. We have the Venus star point at 29 degrees of Libra. So we have Venus who's traveling behind the sun. She's in her underworld journey of her 19 month cycle. She's traveling behind the sun and she's going to meet right in the heart of the sun. So it'll be Earth, Sun, Venus. She's meeting at 29 degrees of Libra. And so this is our very first Libra Venus star point that we've had in over a hundred years. This is bringing in a new relationship paradigm. This is bringing in this energy of a new way, this new evolutionary way of being in relationship with others. And Libra is a sign of non-hierarchical relating. So it's like one-on-one -on -one, non hierarchical relationships. So we're on right Libra, the scales we're balanced. And what we've been working through is on a collective level in each of us on a personal level, as we're the old dominator culture, the old power over dominator culture is dying and we're giving birth to this new earth, right? This new Aquarian age of more conscious ascended relationships and community. We are all working through um, healing power dynamics within ourselves and that of course are playing out in our relationship with others and the Venus star points that have been in Scorpio and we're actually going to have I believe the next time around um 
which will be essentially like four years from now, the interior conjunction is on this axis. I believe we're going to have one more in Scorpio actually before it really goes into goes into Libra here. So as the Venus star points have been moving through Scorpio, we've been healing a lot of these um, power dynamics in relationships, out of balance powers, bringing a lot of healing to that. And now the star points are retrograding back into Libra. So now that we've been healing those power dynamics, we can come into healthier, more sovereign, more um, co-creative, beautiful, like sovereign relating with others. And so this is really, really powerful. I mean, even I think a lot of the theme here as I'm really tuning into it with this Aries full moon um, on this Aries Libra access and how Chiron is playing in and really tuning into how we've just on a collective level, we've had such out of balance kind of relationship dynamics. Most of us have not had healthy uh, relationship modeling within our lives. It's just not been part of our society. This is why we have this really kind of out of balance, you know, um, narcissist empath dynamic where most people are kind of on one end of the spectrum or the other, creating these really intense um, dynamics of codependency. We're healing a lot of this codependency right now. And I feel like this full moon is really wanting to bring illumination to where are we not being authentic within ourselves, one, to ourselves, but two, where are we not showing up authentically in our relationships with others because of this wound, right? This is the exact wound that this full moon with Chiron is wanting to heal here. And actually, I'm just going to stop sharing the chart. I'm going to stop sharing the chart for a second. I mean, uh, something, you know, I think that is really relevant here is it's just been the kind of out of balance relationship dynamic that we've had with this kind of empath narcissist dynamic. There's so, you know, how many relationships are cultivated more from trauma bonding, right? And codependency. Where do we um, engage in codependency and trauma bonding, right? There's just not a healthy foundation for a relationship if it's operating from this, you know, energetic dynamic of codependency of trauma bonding. So there's a lot, a lot of healing available here. And ultimately Aries is about, it's that carnal spark of life, right? Aries is this energy. It's very self-oriented, right? Libra, the opposite sign is us oriented, we oriented. And so this moon with Chiron and Aries and Chiron has been in Aries, you know, since gosh, now I like, I have a hard time holding on to dates, you know, but about like, I believe, you know, 2018, 19, I know there was a retrograde back and forth going back into Pisces and coming back into Aries, but Chiron's been here. And I believe, yeah, I've, since 2019, for sure, Chiron, you know, the healer archetype, the wounded healer archetype has been in Aries and Chiron and Aries is healing to that I am that I am. It's healing to self, self-identity, self-agency. It's certainly offering a lot of healing to the masculine energy as well. And then Chiron will go into Taurus next. And we'll have a lot of the emphasis will be on healing of the feminine as well, because there's really an equal amount of healing needed for the feminine and the masculine, just based off of this out of balance kind of dominator culture that we've been living in. But essentially, Chiron and Aries is healing to the self. So Chiron and Aries is bringing healing to where do we have wounds around something about our authentic self that we received some type of messaging when we were probably very young that we were wrong or bad or we needed to something about us was 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 not okay in order to belong to be accepted we had to deny disown hide reject suppress authentic aspects of ourselves and then take on aspects of ourselves that were not authentic to us so we could have that sense of belonging right with family it could be cancer the squaring sign other relationship friendships we're talking about libra or the other squaring sign capricorn to fit into society so now this is all coming back to self with chiron and aries and aries is just that aries is that like 
energy of I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to be alive. I'm excited to express myself. I'm excited to go out in the world and have all these experiences. Like pure Aries is like, wow, the world's at my fingertip. I, at the world's at my fingertips. I'm just so excited to go out and experience life. So Aries is very much that 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 spark that spark within our heart and where has that where has the flame within our heart been somewhat like quelched you know where has it been extinguished a bit where where has our spark of aliveness our excitement for life our excitement to be here and be alive where has that been um, extinguished to some degree by our life experiences and our traumas um this Aries full moon, Chiron is wanting us to heal and reconnect with our spark of life, our passion, our inspiration, our excitement to be here. And it can actually be really scary and vulnerable to express that. Like I'm a Leo rising and I'm naturally very excited and enthusiastic and passionate. And so much of the time, that when I'm in that pure energy, it's not met by others. And I feel like I receive some messaging as, oh my gosh, you're too much. You're too enthusiastic. Like, like calm down, calm down. And so I've learned, you know, to kind of hide it and it doesn't feel safe to really be like in that full excitement, that fiery, right? The fire element where this full moon is in at Aries, passion, aliveness, enthusiasm, excitement. It's like that pure spirit, it's animation. Aries is the animating spark of life, how we are animated, which means how we are infused by spirit. And when we are, you know, our vessels are infused by spirit, then we can go out and create and be the creative beings that we are. So there's so much healing, even for going back to like, really, this is healing, going back to our sweet, sweet inner child, where where this might be something to contemplate really connecting in with your inner child. Like where did that, just that pure enthusiasm for life, like that joy, that inspiration, that spark of aliveness, where was that initial wound where it started to get extinguished, right? Where you started to retreat within yourself and deny and disown and suppress these aspects of self going back and, really doing some inner child work there could be very, very powerful to connect in with, connect in with that feeling. How did it feel to be that enthusiastic, right? That alive, that excited. Think about the things that make you feel really alive and inspired and excited. These are things just all to contemplate and to, to cultivate here. And where, because this full moon is in Libra, right? Sun, is at 16 Libra, moon is at 16 Aries, and Chiron is at 14 Aries. So there's this really strong energy of healing of the I am that I am, just showing up in our raw, uh, like unfiltered, heart-centered, loving authenticity, and showing up to relationships with others in that way. Because when we hide ourselves, right? This is speaking to moon with Chiron, right? When we hide ourselves because of some wound, because it doesn't feel safe to be our authentic selves, we're not meeting relationships from that authentic place. And then we're going to start um, abandoning our own needs, our own desires, um, authentic aspects of ourself. We're going to start abandoning ourself, right? Or yeah, abandoning ourself. So we're not abandoned by another. And that just creates this, right? Codependent relationship dynamic. And when we're not showing up in our authenticity to relationships, right? When we're abandoning ourselves, we're really setting, we're, we're emanating an energetic frequency where we're not even going to really be able to be fully accepted and embraced by another as who we are, because our external reality is always, if we're abandoning ourselves, our external reality is always going to reflect that back to ultimately to bring us more inward, right? So then we can re-embrace ourselves. Um, so this is really really, really powerful. Also healing themes around um, self-agency, right? So self-agency is the belief that we can go out and have an influence on our reality, on our environment. And of course, there's lots and lots of factors here. And Pluto, who's stationing direct right now, Pluto is stationing direct today, October 8th, as I'm filming this, Pluto does teach us we don't have total control of everything with our ego mind. Pluto is the planet that 
really is going to bring up themes of control, power, surrender. But we do have, right? We are here to be co-creative beings. We are, right? We are animated beings. We are these beings infused by spirit and we are co-creative beings and we came here to create. And so this Aries full moon is very much about like re-enlivening our creative abilities, our creative powers through really like healing to the I am that I am embracing our authentic selves it's so so powerful and when we show up that way we are in a space we are in an energetic we are emanating a frequency where we can call in those people that are vibing on the same wavelength with us and we can be embraced by them it's really it's really really powerful um I'm going to just pull up the chart here for a moment just to kind of focus and focus in my energy on what I'm wanting to focus on. Um, we can see here, actually, this is not even where I'm at right now, but I have the full moon chart set up here. So it's going to be on October 9th at 3.54 p.m. Central. So that is 1.54 p.m. Pacific and just kind of uh, convert as needed to your, your time zone here. Now, full moons, they are opposition, right? So the sun in Libra, the sign of relationship, this is where the energy is. I mean, the, the, the energetic theme right now, the collective theme is relationship healing. I mean, it's really been here since, uh, Mercury retrograde kind of started this off that started in, you know, Mercury retrograde started in September 9th. Mercury is now direct, but really from that time, and as Mercury was moving into Libra pre-retrograde, that's when all these relationship themes started to come up, right? Because we are not here to be isolated islands here. We are relational beings and through our relationship with self and others is how we create here. We are beings that need attunement, right? Connection, bonding, affection. We are here to be in relationship with ourself, with others, and with life itself. So we are in this energy of relationship themes are what is the main energetic themes happening for us right now. So whatever's happening with your relationship, starting with relationship with self, it's not coincidental. This is all part of the evolutionary journey here. So we had Mercury that was in retrograde, you know, throughout September, Mercury station direct, October 2nd, half the retrograde was in Libra, half was in Virgo, while Mercury was in Libra, Venus was in Virgo, so they had mutual reception here. So one of the big themes of this Mercury retrograde was relationship healing, and coming into more sovereign, healthy relationship as we had Venus in Virgo, Virgo being virgin, the original meaning of virgin, meaning one who is whole to themselves, right? And so now we're in Libra season, right? This is a time to have this emphasis on relationships. We have Libra season about a month, you know, once a year. And we have now this Aries full moon with uh, with Chiron, the sun in Libra, moon with Aries. Yeah, moon in Aries with Chiron, all this relationship healing, particularly relationship with self, so we can be in more authentic, sovereign, healthy relationship with others. And now we're going into this Venus Libra star point, which is October 22nd, the same day Saturn stations direct here. And so this is bringing in this new relationship paradigm as it is the first Libra star point that we're having, you know, in our, in our lives here. Now the Venus cycle, this is important to bring back this context. The Venus cycle started in Capricorn. That's when Venus was retrograde. She was passing between the earth and sun. So she, this whole cycle is infused with Capricorn energy. Capricorn is, you know, um, uh, integrity structure Capricorn represents the structures of our communities and our societies so what this Venus cycle is very much about is Capricorn can be thought of sometimes as like the operating manual right we are we are creating the essentially and I this is kind of a very it's not quite the right word here but we're like we're creating the operating manual for 
you know, sacred relating, sacred sovereign relating for the new earth, this Venus cycle in Capricorn, Capricorn being so much about community, right? This is very much about seeding the new relationship templates for the new earth, which is, you know, for looking at kind of the age of Aquarius, sacred, sovereign, relating, right? Where everybody has the, is given the spaciousness to be their authentic selves and really embracing everyone and their authentic authenticity and where everybody can bring their gifts and share their resources together to come up with these really powerful collective solutions. So other themes of this Venus and Capricorn cycle are really coming into integrity with our heart, coming into integrity with the values of our heart, like walking the path of heart, uh, walking the path of our values with integrity, creating new structures in our lives from our hearts. I mean, there's so much here with this Capricorn cycle, but, you know, Capricorn is very much a sign. All the earth element signs in many senses are about sovereignty. Now, Capricorn has kind of been paired because it is the underlying kind of societal structures. Capricorn has been connected with the patriarchy and the dominator culture, but that is not the essence of Capricorn. That is more of a distortion of the current, um, you know, world we've been living in. Capricorn is the circle of grandmothers. I love the shamanic astrology mystery school speaks to this, right? It is the council of the wise elders, the circle of grandmothers. Capricorn is really connected to earth-based wisdom, the wisdom of the earth, the trees, the stones, the wisdom of our ancestors. And one thing about Capricorn is the true essence. There is this beautiful um, sovereignty to the energetic, like the pure energetic of Capricorn. So when I'm seeing this first Venus star point is in a uh, the superior conjunction, which is actually in a grander Capricorn cycle, you know, this is about sovereign uh, relationship you know, this is a company, this is seeding a new paradigm of sovereign, sacred relating, sovereign, sovereign, sacred, sovereign, sacred relationships, right? These where we're healing these power dynamics. Wow. Think about what we could create if we're not energetically enmeshed in all these like murky, energetic um, entanglements and courting and all these things. And this is what the self know moving through Scorpio is really clearing out. I mean, this whole time, the self knows in Scorpio, we're clearing out old past, um, we're clearing out really deep karmic things, karmic ties with other people. This is a really powerful kind of resetting of karma, particularly with karmic connections. So uh, renegotiating karmic contracts, perhaps freeing ourselves of karmic contracts that are no longer in alignment with who we are and where we are on our evolutionary journey. This is about really, yeah, clearing out all the muck with um, messy, energetic um, connections and dynamics and that are, you know, and messy, energetic connections come from deep core wounds, typically core wounds around uh, fears of rejection and abandonment, which is then why we start getting all these messy energetic cords. So there's a lots and lots of healing here available. I mean, Scorpio South Node is really working on some of our deepest, deepest, um, deepest, deepest things within our psyche, bringing up things from our unconscious for healing our deepest wounds, um, especially around power dynamics, right? This is really big on a collective level, a lot's coming up around power on a collective level, but certainly where are we out of balance with power with ourselves on an inner level? So there is so much here about healing our power, um, healing our relationship with power within ourselves and then so we can come into uh, sovereign, sacred relating with others where we're not engaging in these really unhealthy games and power dynamics with others. I mean, it's really, really powerful. And so if we're looking at Libra, you know, this Libra Aries access, Aries being relationship with self and Libra being relationship with others and full moons are opposition oppositions want to integrate, right? So with Aries, it's my relationship with me. Uh, like 
in every relationship, essentially there's a me, there's a you, and there's a we, right? There's a magical third that's created out of the relationship. And essentially this is what this full moon is wanting to, wanting us to connect with that magical third, right? The divine child healing our relationship with self. And then so we can come into more collaborative, co-creative relationship with, with others and create something beautiful and creating something amazing here. Now, I'm saying all of this, right? And it sounds really beautiful and amazing, but Chiron's going to bring up our deepest wounds. It's not easy. So there could be a lot coming up emotionally here, particularly, um, yeah, I'm just going to stop sharing the screen for a second because I'm not really pointing to anything, right? This full moon could bring up, particularly this is Aries, Mars world sign, right? Anger, frustration, sacred rage, right? Where is there still... Where is there anger, frustration, rage within ourselves from a deep wound? And there might be a powerful opportunity to express it, right? In a healthy, safe way to creatively move that anger or rage out. Like, is there a healthy container where that could come out of? Um, is there anything that needs to be expressed? I mean, there could be even something just writing everything down that you need to say to someone and maybe, you know, burning it. If you have a safe way to burn it, um, there could be really powerful. Aries wants to typically express, right? So is there something you need to express to another? Now, full moons can get really volatile. So this may be not the time. This may not be a productive time to actually like have that um, heated conversation with another, but there might be something, there might be an opportunity where there's a safe kind of container where if it's telling someone there's something I need to say for my own healing journey, or, I mean, you always want to use your own discernment and intuition on this, honestly, but right. There might be, if there's a wound, you know, maybe it was from your inner child, your, your, your inner teenager, you know, this previous aspect of yourself that's not healed so maybe even bringing up through the context of my inner child has a wound and there's something my inner child needs to express for this healing because Aries typically wants to express out right or it could be physical activity um, use your discernment if you're wanting to express something to another you are angry at there may be some powerful opportunities for healing there but also, there's a lot that could get really volatile. People are more likely to personalize things. Um, so you really want to use your own intuition here, but there might be a, safe, a space for a safe container here is what I'm trying to say, where there could actually be like a healing kind of ceremonial container if the other person is like consenting and willing, willing to allow you to have that like healing expression. So um I'm just sharing that there, like really use your own discernment and intuition and check in because there's also this full moon just is bringing a lot of volatility and intensity, you know, being an Aries, it's like fiery sign. So you really want to check in with your own intuition there. Um, this is where everything we should always check things of our own intuition with Aries energy. It can get really impulsive, um, erratic, impulsive, you know, so you want to be mindful if you're feeling really impulsive, just wanting to do something on an impulse. That's a reaction because probably there's a more healthier opportunity to first be with yourself. So you could mindfully express whatever you need to express with another whenever that opportunity comes up. Um, yeah. So just wanting to share that there. Um there's just this really, really powerful, really powerful opportunity for relationship healing. And if your nervous system is feeling really um, anxious, you know, if there's anxiety, intensity, anger, all of these things, I mean, this full moon is going to bring up a lot, right? And the greatest alchemy comes from when we can actually hold space for our emotions in a safe way, right? All the energy of the main energy of 2022, uh, for the astrology points to embodiment. How can we safely hold space for what's moving through while we're staying embodied, we're staying grounded and letting that energy alchemize through us. And so, yeah, I'm just kind of wanting to bring that up. I'm just, my mind is going in like so many directions here at once. Um, also, you know, when we're looking at this full moon, Venus is the ruling planet of Libra. So she's right with the sun here because she is preparing to um, meet the sun here. Now she is in her underworld journey. Yeah, Venus is at 13 degrees. So she is very closely opposite Chiron at 14 degrees. Venus will actually make the exact opposition to Chiron the next day. 
So Venus opposite Chiron, you know, Venus and Libra, this is again, this is going to bring up things around relationship. It's going to trigger wounds. It's going to agitate where we have a wound around relationships, right? This is going to bring up deep, uh, deep wounds within our hearts, right? Where have we, where have we put barriers around our hearts because of some wound where we're to protect ourselves, but now it's creating barriers from really authentic connection here. And where again, Venus is opposite Chiron and Aries, where did it not feel to be safe to be ourselves? And so it's also bring up wounds with a masculine as well, for sure. There's a lot here. And the energy of Chiron, it is the healing is from our broken, open human heart. The Chiron wound comes from when our hearts finally break open and we feel the pain, right? We feel the pain. We feel that heart suffering and we allow ourselves to feel it and let that energy alchemize. Just really like Chiron is that energy that will bring you to your knees. Like it will just break the heart wide open and it just connects us with our beautiful humanity and allows more spirit to flow through us as well. Um, so there's something here about this opposition wanting to kind of break our hearts wide open here. And um, yeah, so Venus is in Libra and she's traveling behind the sun. So what I'm really, you know, she's in her underworld journey. This is the part of the myth of Anana, where Anana is, you know, she's, she's dead. She's being placed on the meat hook, essentially, in the mythology. And she's about to be resurrected back into life as Venus meets the sun. But right now we're in this really powerful energy of dying to who we are not, to be reborn into who we are, right? The Venus cycle is a very much a, a journey of, death a death of who we are not right all the conditioning all the distortions we've taken on around the feminine the sacred feminine our uh values and you know any distortion is actually that's that's keeping us out of the sacred feminine not being it's keeping us disconnected from the sacred feminine so the venus cycle is wanting to connect us to our sacred feminine so it's the morning star venus it's Anana descending down into the, through the seven gates into the underworld, you know, so shedding away, giving away her royal vestment. So Venus morning star, it's this energy of surrender, release, the conditioning, the distortions, everything we thought about who we were supposed to be and is who we are not, you know, all these things around the feminine. So we're releasing, releasing, releasing. And as Venus is in the underworld, it's the final release, the final surrender, especially this part, because Venus has not met the sun yet. And this is the part where we've shed and surrendered so much. Now we get to really be with who we are. We get to love ourselves back into wholeness. We get to embrace all the aspects of ourself. This is all tying together all the aspects of ourself that we thought was wrong, right? That we, we experienced shame or guilt about and we all the authentic aspects about our feminine that we suppressed and denied and disowned. This is where we get to love everything, love ourselves back into wholeness, right? We get to really embrace the beauty of who we are, loving ourselves back into wholeness, really coming into wholeness with our authentic values. And Venus is about to be resurrected. So we're about to be reborn into more of our sacred feminine essence, more of our divine feminine essence, more of who we authentically are. And so this Venus opposing Chiron right before meeting the sun here on October 22nd, it's this really, really powerful energy here of, um, yeah, right now, really powerful energy of healing of, yeah, healing of deep wounds of where it didn't feel safe to be who we are in relationship with others. Um, there's this really powerful energy of, I see here of breaking open, right? This is opposition. Where have we placed ba uh, barriers, um, armoring, protection around our hearts that is actually keeping us out of connection with self and others? There's this really powerful energy to come into deeper attunement, connection. Yeah. Understanding, understanding with others. And so, uh, in Mars, the ruling planet of Aries is in Gemini preparing to go retrograde here. 
And Mars is going to go retrograde at the end of October and will be retrograde through December, Mars, or through January, actually. Mars goes retrograde once every two years, as about a two year cycle. And Mars is opposite, or not opposite, Mars is a square Neptune retrograde here. And this is really powerful. So as Mars is squaring Neptune retrograde, you know, one, our energy may feel very diffused and scattered. So this may actually amplify with this Aries full moon if we're wanting to like be reactive. And, you know, there could be this energy of like a lot of confusion around why we're triggered, actually. Yeah, this is coming through. There could be this really, yeah, there could be some confusion around like why we're triggered, wanting to just that Gemini energy, like go in different directions and express the energy out and move the energy away so we don't have to feel it, right? So we can, um, or distract ourselves from feeling it. There may be a, an escapist energy. I'm gonna escape from how I'm feeling kind of energy. Um, yeah, there's so many different ways this could go, but essentially I do feel the powerful energy is, is there a safe way to presence and be with what's moving through us? Um, that's really powerful. And yes, as Mars is opposite Neptune, there could be some confusion on, we don't even know why we're directing energy out in different ways. So being really mindful of how we're directing our energy feels really, really important um, because there could be some confusion. And with Neptune, you know, this is all about coming back into our higher heart. This is connecting more in with our intuition as opposed to like the thinking linear logical mind. Mercury is now direct and is really starting to make some speed here. So we have may have a little more clarity of mind here, but I do see, yeah, I'm really feeling this energy of perhaps a lot of confusion around what's triggering us and wanting to kind of just like spin our wheels and like get the energy out. And which is almost like now, maybe <laughs> I'm wondering if I should have said what I said earlier about maybe we do need to get the energy out in a healthy container. I think there maybe somebody needed to hear that. I think there might be an opportunity for that that could be very healing for someone. But we also want to be mindful that we're not just trying to move our energy out so we're not feeling what we're feeling, because then that's still there. Then there's still like it's not going to get to we're actually not going to connect in with that deeper wound that needs healing here. So there's just something to think about that here to be really mindful of our energy. We might need to kind of gather it back in, calling your energy back to you. So you're not just kind of like spinning your wheels, going in all sorts of different directions here. Yeah. I'm just kind of tuning in. I'm just kind of tuning in. There's so much happening. I mean, I've been writing some content on we're moving out of retrograde season for many of the planets, right? Pluto is out of retrograde now. So there's something really powerful. Contemplate as Pluto is coming out of retrograde, Pluto went retrograde late April. So was retrograde through now, you know, Pluto just stationed direct today or is stationing direct today. I'm not sure the exact timing, honestly, but notice what every time Pluto goes retrograde, you know, like about six months a year, five, six months a year, like 5.5 months a year, there's always going to be something really deep within our psyche that's coming up for healing that's coming up for alchemization. So look at what, uh, what house in your chart holds Capricorn because uh, Pluto has been going retrograde once a year since 2008 <laughs> in that area. So there's a big deeper theme here that will give insight into what area of your life has been calling for deep, deep shadow work, deep alchemy, you know, Pluto, there could be these themes of like, especially right now, because on Pl uh, planet station, station retrograde or direct their energy gets really intensified and dialed up the planet slows down to change directions. Of course, it's an optical illusion. Planets go retrograde, the inner planets, Mercury and Venus, when they're lapping the earth and sun. So they're going around the sun faster than us and lap us. And the outer planets, Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and beyond go retrograde when the earth is passing them. It's an optical illusion, right? When you pass a car on the highway and it looks like the car and your uh, the other car in your rear view mirror is going backwards. So yes. So what I'm, I, I can't remember what I was saying. When planet station retrograde or direct, the energy gets really dialed up, right? The, in the, the planets of those, uh, the energy of those planets start to speak to us really strongly. So now that Pluto is going direct, there might be really um, things coming up around what was coming 
up, what was the big Pluto retrograde themes for you? Seeking alchemization, seeking greater awareness, seeking integration. And um, Pluto will bring up themes of power, control, obsession. You know, Pluto is our relationship with power. So when Pluto goes retrograde, it's this deep opportunity to come into a more empowered relationship with ourselves, right? To reclaim our own power um, because Pluto will speak to, are we disempowered? Are we holding our power and are we holding our power from a place of love? Are we utilizing our power from like an unconscious manipulative place? These are all big themes. Now, also what Pluto will also connect us with is the energy of uh, surrender. Pluto will bring up where are we trying to control things from our ego? Because our when our ego starts to try to control things, Pluto will come in this deeper evolutionary force and say, yeah, you can't control everything. You don't have con complete control over every outcome in your life. And Pluto will bring those opportunities or those um, experiences, right? That are like a riptide, an overpowering riptide or an overpowering swell or tsunami where you can't do anything about it, but just ride the flow of life. And so um, Pluto will really like just, um, yeah, will just like create that depth to the ego and that kind of sense here. And I don't think it's about like, our ego is not a bad thing. I don't ever want to like demonize our ego because this is actually how we experience life here. Um, this is how we have physical incarnations and experience life, but right, this is about our relationship with it. So Pluto will bring up these really powerful themes around control and surrender, power, obsession, these kinds of things here. And um, Vesta just went direct as well. And Vesta is, you know, she's the priestess archetype. I did some writing on her. She's been retrograde and Pisces and Aquarius, and she's stationed uh, direct conjunct Saturn, the planet of integrity, right? The planet of discipline, diligence, integrity, structure, authority. And Vesta is a planet of commitment and our devotion to our sacred service. And Saturn is actually very concerned with that too. Saturn is like the planet that's like, well, are you cultivating the skills you need to you know, to, to do your, your soul, your, your purpose in this lifetime. And Saturn is saying, are you focusing your time and energy on what really matters to you? Saturn will, and Saturn will also bring the karmic learning lessons we need to learn so we can grow, so we can fulfill our soul's purpose in this lifetime. But Saturn and Vesta are both very concerned about, are you devoting your time and energy to what matters? And Vesta is very much sacred purpose, right? Our sacred gifts um you know best is very much connected to focus and uh discipline and devotion just like saturn is so they're they you know they both and saturn's about to go direct here on october 22nd there's this really powerful energy of are we really devoting our time and energy to what is our role to birth the new age and the age of aquarius you know are we really are we getting distracted and letting our energy be very diffused and splintered and distracted, or are we really kind of keeping our energy and focus and attention on what really matters here? And as Vesta was retrograde, she really um, brought in these big themes of what needs to be reoriented around our sacred purpose, what needs to be reoriented within ourselves so we can actually, you know, we're willing to devote ourselves to our sacred purpose, our sacred gifts, our sacred devotion. Maybe some new things came around what, what is our sacred purpose and how are we going to give our sacred gifts? Um, and Vesta and Aquarius and Pisces is our very multidimensional signs. I really see Vesta was opening up access for, uh, you know, those of us that are star seeds. And I think pretty much we're all star seeds, just depends if we're really like connected to it and activating our star seed essence, but brought in, um, it's really activating the light codes for like multidimensional healing. So she's really doing a lot to, she's been doing a lot to really like support uh, the star seeds here um, with maybe bringing in their, uh, new healing modalities uh, based on like the light codes that are coming in, the star seed light codes. There's lots of energy of multidimensional womb healing, um, multidimensional, you know, sacred sexuality here. There's so much shadow around that. I mean, it's like ridiculous how much shadow there is in this field. And um, so also bringing in a lot of energy of like discernment around that as well. But there's so much here. I'm seeing like Vesta, who's been going retrograde and uh, Aquarius and Pisces and Aquarius really activating. Yeah. Just like wanting to bring through new healing modalities or new ways to even like on new levels, like just activating, uh, sending us light codes, right. That we can access within to bring through uh, our healing modalities 
on this new way. There's like energetic upgrades I'm really sensing here. Um, it's very powerful. So as the planets go direct, they're going to go over that, you know, section of the Zodiac a third time, right? The post retrograde shadow. That's where we really start to integrate these bigger themes that happened during the retrogrades. Um, and if I really like went more in depth than to each of the planets that have gone direct so far, Mercury, uh, Vesta and Saturn, no, Mercury, Vesta and Pluto. I did some writing this week. Um, if you're on my email list, you can just check that. It's all together in one place. It's also on you know, my Instagram and on my Facebook as well. So you can check there uh, because I think this video is getting pretty long already. We're just in this really, really powerful time of uh, healing and transformation. We're in this time of accelerated evolution, especially in regard to relationships. So I love you all so much. And if you want to connect on a deeper level and see how these themes are really playing out for you on a deeper level, I would love to sit in a sacred session with you and an astrology reading. You can find that out here um, at the link in the description. And I love you all so much. And I'm wishing you so many blessings through this time.